this is like something that Marshall would probably be better at answering because uh, he's been saying that so lot, so much being a musician and mm. actually finishing an amazing book that we worked on till one in the morning last night. Nice. Uh, you know, um, like it's a brick, but it's so awesome. I mean, I can't oh, wait. God. Yeah, I'm like, it's an amazing <laughs> book. But, um, you know, it really um, is, um, well, uh, you know, I, I tend to think of it as a fundamental hum of creation. You know, like, all, you know, like if you imagine the plunk field, you know, I, I was thinking this is early, you know, early on, like you were saying, I was, um, I was in the middle of, I tell this story before, but I'll just do it shortly. But I was in the middle of a, a rock climb. Uh, actually, it was, it was a cool war ice climb. Uh, it was, it's a fairly dangerous cool war. It's, it's about 5,000 feet of vertical. And it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's laid, um, it's, it, it's, it's a steep cool war, but it has these walls, um, very, very steep walls, rock walls on either side and a very, very dangerous Berkshren at the bottom, meaning like it's got this huge crevasse at the bottom that separates it from the main glacier. So if you lose it, you know, you're done. Anyway, so, and I was Basically so a chimney of rock and ice, that's the Kular. Yeah, yeah. A crevasse crack into the ice that you don't know where the bottom is. Exactly, bottom. Yeah. exactly. And you're having the best time of your life. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and I'm soloing, so there's no second error. And, uh, and um, you know, I, uh, I'm, I've got a telescope on my back and, you know, I'm getting to the top of this mountain. I'm on my way to go and watch um, the Levy comet hit Jupiter. And um, I, um, you know, I'm, I started late because of all the equipment. And what happens in ice climbing in the summer is when you start late, you get in trouble because as the afternoon or late morning sun hits the rock, it melts the ice that holds some of the rocks together and, the, and it starts to avalanche on you. And basically you get these rocks flying by and they sound like jets going by when they go by because it's like they're flying, you know, they're, and they're like, whoo, whoo, you know. And so I was going up and I'm like, wow, I gotta get out of here. And it's coming down. And as I'm thinking that, I'm thinking, wow, you know, we always think of mountains as these solid things that are, you know, unmutable, like they're just, but they're really alive. They're continuously, you know, shedding layers. The glaciers are continuously moving, cutting into it. The rivers are cutting into it. It's constantly moving. I start to think about the fundamental oscillation of the planet itself as the mountains get eroded and they fill up the valleys and, and, and new mountains are being made over very long periods of time, being the fundamental resonance frequency of the crust of the earth. And then I start to think about all the other things on the earth that, you know, like all the birds singing, mm -hmm. you know, like if I could isolate of all the noise on the surface and I just took out just the birds singing all around the world, mm. right? Wow, that would be like, whoa, this like fundamental tone, like, you know, something beautiful. And then like all the leaves in the, in the, in the trees, you know? And then, uh, you know, and of course, I thought of all the orgasms of everybody that's having an orgasm and everything. <laughs> and then, like, all this stuff. And then I, I was thinking, you know, and so then I was thinking about this fundamental hum of the plunk field, meaning mm -hmm. like if I went through all the frequencies, right, I could like keep going and keep going and keep going. And eventually I'd get to the fundamental frequency of the fundamental pixel of space time, like resonating, mm -hmm. you know, and I you know, and pulsing 
everything into existence, pulsing everything into life, right? As it oscillates, as it resonates through. And like, that's not far from like string theory, thinking that like the universe is oscillating strings, like yeah. it's this kind of fundamental principle. And then, you know, and then all the overtones and undertones of this, of this fundamental, right? Yeah. And, 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 and then, you know, the, the, um, the har the harmonics of it, mm. right? Defining boundary conditions, mm -hmm. right? And so, and, and so then it was like, oh, I'm like, oh, I like the, the music of the spheres, right? Like, Pythagoreans, you know, they had it, like they had the right concept, you know, and then, yeah. and then, of course, I thought of all this while I'm climbing, trying to save my life from this cold. <laughs> I, I, was th I was thinking of like this, this oscillator that I could build in a laboratory to kind of match, like produce a resonance match to that fundamental field mm -hmm. and what would be the frequencies right yeah. what would be the intervals like how would it and and what well, this is like 25 years later finally you know we're starting to work out the math of like where like if i go of course the oscillating rate at the Planck scale is like way above audio right it's like wow we you know like really <laughs> but you know it, it because i mean it's oscillating at significant you know speed of light right but yeah. but but when you step it down you step it down you step it then you like find the octaves when it gets in the audio where is the audio like if i can nail right the audio like uh boundary condition right uh -huh. where the where the harmonics would be uh -huh. then i can match to the the fundamental absolutely right so uh and that's what we're discovering is that it's not quite we were close but we weren't quite on it mm -hmm. uh, and musicians and, and researchers and, you know, m more and more people are starting to like, you realize, wait, we don't have to tune continuously to this other, you know, scale that may not be as harmonious with the natural order as we thought. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, you know, this is, this is the discussion that's going on right now. Um, the mathematics certainly start, is starting to come in place, right? But the, I just give you the conceptual notion of how audio relates to unified physics. Uh -huh. This is literally what the subject of, um, of Marshall's book is on is the relationship of the musical scale the unified field and geometry right marshall that is correct yes yeah. yeah yeah the book is called cosmometry and it's it's really fundamentally about the cosmic geometry the unified physics model that the sim has developed and the system of music and how they're really all just one thing and as you just described, Nassim, it's, and the beauty is that it's very evident when you actually just put these pieces together at a very basic fundamental level, the, the, the matchup is, you know, it's, it's undeniable. It's, it's obvious. Yeah. And, it's so um, amazing. That's why, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's that way, not because <laughs> it was an interesting, cool thing to do and fun to kind of put these pieces together, but it's actually because it makes, as you just described, it makes sense that, you know, given that the, the universe is one unified field of vibratory conditions and that there are these vibratory conditions create these boundaries that become the, 
the different levels of perception, uh, you know, the full range beyond even our visible and auditory perception. These are all different boundaries, uh, frequency-based boundaries. And it's all an interaction of these frequencies in the electromagnetic realm, creating a one year's universal holographic field. And in the uh, acoustic realm, creating um, what I call a holosonic field, which is also the acoustic element or aspect I, I feel really is what creates form. And therefore you get the geometric relationships. Um, it's the interaction of both the acoustic and electromagnetic that create these relationships, these geometries, the tensegrity. And all of it is informed by the harmonic relationships, the resonance aspect. You know, that's why we are called the Resonance Science Foundation, because fundamentally, this harmonic structure, the nature of the resonance that is what defines uh, anything and everything coming into form, coming into harmonious relationship um, throughout the universe, the spacing of planets around stars and the star systems and the galaxies and their formation are all based on the same fundamental set, fundamental set of harmonics and ratios. So um, yes, that's, that's absolutely the, really the foundation of the unified physics model in, in large part, as you just described. Um, yeah. so. and I, I, I was amazed when we were looking at your book yesterday, some of these relationships are so clearly define harmonic mm -hmm. relationship that it's undeniable clear as day you know these are very fundamental to the creative uh structure of the universe and and ourselves you know our body our Absolutely. consciousness everything we are you know everything we see is literally the music of the sphere the whole thing is singing the whole thing is singing and dancing <laughs>